very good morning to you Lagos and thank you very much for staying with us. You are listening to Smooth 98.1. Today is Monday the 21st of January 2019. Welcome to Freshly Pressed 981, a program that brings you a detailed analysis of our newspaper stories this morning. And joining us to do analysis to these stories are three gentlemen for Monday morning. We have uh, the troublesome Cheta Wazir. Good morning. Cheta, how are you doing? Uh, what? Good morning. How are you? Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Was, uh, weekend. My weekend was fine. I was good. Okay. <laughs> and we have Tunde Okufi in the house this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You can find uh, Cheta at Chexta on social media. You can find Tunde at Big Hoops. And then we have a wonderful gentleman, Ikeme Sips. Good, Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us, Ikeme Sips. He's at Judge Ike on all socials. At Lagos, we'll start with the stories, but first, uh, here's how to send your messages across. Yes, reach out to us on WhatsApp. The number to do that is 0809-444-0981. I'll say that again, 0809-444-0981. Also, you can reach out to us uh, on Twitter. We are at Smooth981FM. Please use the hashtag FreshDepress981 to be a part of this conversation. All right, thank you very much. Let's start with our first story. Chat, I'll come to you first from, for this story on this day newspaper. So this day has this report of the presidential debates that happened on Sunday. Uh, sorry, on Saturday. Debates happened. <laughs> so there was this debate uh, that happened, and it's supposed to. It was supposed to have fielded five candidates: uh, APC, PDP. Um, uh, we have a, we have the other parties actually. The now we have a couple of others now. Let's look at it. Obviously, Kassili was supposed to be there. He, she was there. Faladu Ortoye was there. Mo, Kingsley Mogalu was there. But uh, the PDP and APC candidates were absent. So talk about the current president and the opposition, the major opposition. <laughs> so so what are your thoughts on this story? The two See? candidates in mm. practical terms did not appear. So I don't know what you're, why you're calling it a debate. It was a talk show. A debate happened. The fact that the other candidates no, were absent. It was a talk show. Now let's look at the numbers. Yes. In 2015, Buhari had 15.4 million votes. Jonathan had 12.8 million. Do you know how many votes all the other candidates combined had? How many? 300,000. And that's 2015? Yes. Mm. It probably will be worse this year. The number of invalid votes in 2015 was 850,000. So there were more people who didn't even know how to vote properly. Three times more than all the other candidates combined to get votes. Um, as you know, my job means that I am on the road a lot. It's one of the reasons I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And today is January 21. This year, I've already been in 14 states. I've seen passed through, visited, all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you for a fact that in Sokoto states, all the people that I spoke to, because he saw as an administrator, mm -hmm. all the people I spoke to have never heard of any of the other candidates. Same in Akwaibom. It's only in Lagos and Abuja that I have seen uh, posters of Kingsley Morgan. Even in on those states where Shore comes from, I've, I've been in Owa, Stupa, and Oren this year. And I had I didn't see any Shore posters in any of those places. Mm -hmm. Akwaibon, Anambra, Imo, Rivers, Edo, Ondo, Ogun, Kano, Zamfara, Katsina, Sokoto, Niger, are other states. I have there's zero up there presence of these other guys. So I don't agree with Atiku saying Atiku gets into the venue, which was what happened, and then saying, Oh, because Buhari is not there, I will not um, debate. Mm -hmm. To me, it appeared arrogant. It, it, was, it, was, it was a bad uh, view to me personally. But from a strategic viewpoint, here's the thing there were two major candidates. Everybody and their dog knows that there are, there are really two candidates in this election. So if one of the other candidates did not even bother to show, mm. who do you think will be the lightning rod for the others in that debate? Mm. So mm. logically, and then, logically and then, wait, speaking, wait, 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 just wait, wait, wait. give me a second. Let me clear wait, something. Let me land now. Because you continue your conversation. I, I don't want to lose the logically train of speaking, thought. Logically speaking, there are 91 the train of candidates thought. for the presidential elections. No, there are two candidates. To, no. There are two candidates. There are two candidates and, so and 89 places. Yeah. No, there are two candidates and 89 places. If you say there are two major candidates, mm. Mbano, so. Mbano, I just gave you numbers, <laughs> Valentine. Oh. There are two candidates and 89 placeholders. The 89 will not get 500,000 votes. It's a, it's a fact. So why are we wasting time? We need to understand that we are not running a parliamentary system. We are running a, a 
four man's photocopy of the American system where you will have two parties dominate. So, and until we reconcile with that fact, we'll keep having incidents such as this. Why should Nigerians take them uh, take uh, the major parties that you you, you mentioned? Which why Nigerians? Why should Nigerians take the major parties seriously if the okay, kills another, are here? Another number. Me, you I ask, you ask me to allow you asking. to land. I see the you can't preempt so. my statement. Okay, why should I, okay. So why should Nigerians take them very seriously if they fail to attend such sensitive debates that would require them How to answer is it? Is it, necessary is it, is questions? It, it was the first major debate as organized by the Broadcasters Organization of Nigeria. And he filled out this candidate from, was the, television from only the APC, from the PDP, from the ANN, Association for New Nigeria, for the ACP and Allied Congress Party, and from YPP, Young Progressives Party. Okay. I was sitting in my hotel in Kano when the thing came up. Mm -hmm. When I saw that nobody was that nobody was there, I, I immediately switched over to the Arsenal Chelsea game. I considered it to be a more constructive use of my time. But as soon as the game finished, the Arsenal fans were happy for you guys. As soon as the game finished, I switched back to NTA. And guess what? Even NTA was not showing at that point. Although people later told me that NTA started out showing. But at some point, NTA logged off. As of when Arsenal and Chelsea game finished, NTA was no longer showing. So your point that shows you how seriously even the national broadcaster takes it. Valentine. As of 2010, only 40% of Nigerian households have a TV. And then when you factor in our light situation, the truth of the matter is that this debate thing, and it's it's a sad indictment on the state of affairs, but Thank it you. is only for the noise-making classes, which me and you are part of. In the, what sense? You think the leader shouldn't, or the, the candidate the shouldn't be held accountable? The rest of my... The, or I, be, I, I, Valentine, I started by saying I don't agree with the fact that, for example, that mm. people pulled out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm. However, those of us in the noise making classes, we have to realize our real position in the scheme of things and know that we have a lot of work to put in to become really relevant. Because we live in a country where they can afford to walk away from this and it, it makes hardly a dent in their numbers. Right. And that's just the harsh reality. It should make a dent. You have a PVC, uh, you just make your decisions based on that. And do you have a PVC? I do. Oh, congrats. Thank do you, you have? I do. Let's oh, congrats. Let's move on now. Do you have? Cheta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, right. Everybody can said we go on? you told me uh, you don't have. Newspaper has this next headline. CBN to maintain status quo on monetary policy rates. And that's uh, from the punch. I'll continue to make for this one. According to this report, the said monetary policy rates uh, uh, is, will make the economy sluggish if it's in, uh, been implemented. But we do not necessarily know the reason for the, you know, the pause, so to speak. The decision being made for well, your thoughts. Well, Dave, I mean, we can analyze in any way um, we want to, but they, they stated the reasons why they felt the money policy as it is. Mm -hmm. um, they believe that it, it will tighten, um, it will slow down growth. You know, remember that um, our, own, our, our projections for growth um, are slower than um, even the IMF projections. So I, I guess it's the you know, central bank um, and the monetary, monetary policy um, um, committee or commission are, you know, have that, um, are looking at that very. Um, very closely. It's, it's a bit different from the noise that we had heard earlier, which was that they were looking to tighten uh, the monetary policy um, um, rate, um, especially if you look at, you know, spending over the Christmas period, the, the inflationary, possible inflationary trends, over spending over the holiday period, and then um, the upcoming elections as well. Um, those are the um, those are two factors, especially the upcoming elections, that you know, they need to probably um, um, contribute in a wash or, you know, and, you know, more liquid uh, mm -hmm. than expected. So a number of people for different reasons were expecting this uh, tightening, especially if you had listened to what was coming out of um, out of the um, central bank um, for weeks leading up onto this, mm -hmm. with many suggestions around um, tightening the, the rate, um, also reviewing the, um, the cash um, reserve ratios and all of that. And, and now they're taking this position. The, the only reason, the only plausible reason that we can give here is because they, they, they worry um, the impact it will have on the exchange rates, yes. uh, and then the impact that will have on uh, on growth, on projected growth, and, and growth is already projected very soon. So, um, it's, it's, it's currently status quo until the next 
Alright, thank you very much. Let's move on now to this next story. Uh, this is coming to you, Chetel. Passenger accuses Buhari of rigging plots, false uh, CJN trial. He's made uh, a few allegations here. Well, some that the presidency is not finding really funny. They said former, former president, Nishoba Lassan John Sunny, accused President Mohamed Buhari of allegedly misusing security institutions to fight all critics and opponents of his administration. He says that this, he calls this, describes this as an, another Abacha era. Uh, has uh, been surfacing in, in, in the light of the unfolding developments recently. What are your thoughts on this? Well, unfortunately, this is one of those occasions where the, the messenger will end up being sent a message. Um, Obasanjo was opportunity, like Buhari, to be, uh, to be head of state of Nigeria twice. Um, he was head of state in between 1976 and 1979. And then he was, head, he was a president between 1999 and 2007. And um, under him, some really um, nefarious activities occurred. So um, the APC, in their reaction, pointed out to some of the nefarious things. I mean, it was under him that uh, people like uh, Andrew Haran Rockshaw, that the city governor was kidnapped. It was under him that governors were removed by fiat and all of that. Um, and then we all remember the fiasco of the 2007 general elections, which um, even the winner of the elections embarrassedly admitted that uh, <laughs> these elections in India. Having said that, we need as a people to learn some nuance. Um, whether the messenger is bad, I mean, if a bad person can bring you a message, you, you listen to the content of the message yes. and seek lessons from it. Mm -hmm. And I would say that Obasanjo, being an experienced hand in some of these really nefarious activities, knows when nefarious activities are happening. Mm. Self succession projects. Last week, uh, uh, Buhari was in front of uh, the cameras one of those few times that he has uh, bothered to talk to us as a people. And uh, Kadir Ahmed asked him a very simple question So, if the, if the results don't go your way, are you going to accept? Contrast with his predecessor who said, My ambition is not what the life of any Nigerian. Mm -hmm. The man went around and around that village and then and, and ended up not, not answering the questions. So at a, at a point, the, the moderator even had to hush the vice president to say something along the lines of, I beg, may talk for himself now. Mm. So self-succession, I mean, look at the whole INEC thing with Damien and Zakari. If anything, for the optics, it's very bad. The extension of the, of the service chief's uh, tenure, despite the fact that they are supposed to have gone, he has, uh, in, in short, and Obasanjo in his letter acknowledged that he finally bowed to pressure. Mm. In removing in uh, removing the IG, the IG was supposed to have retired for two weeks. They didn't say anything about, it, even though his retirement date was third of January or should have been third of January. For two okay. weeks, they didn't say anything about it. Um, I had an article published in the Guardian last week about about that same issue. Okay. And then the next day, so just like that, the IG was gone. We thank God for that. Look at the proofs. I mean, article did is coming to America thing on. Uh, as soon as he showed up in in America, the next thing we hear is, oh, he stole or was it he refused to pay whatever, is, refused to pay is the same thing as from, from a bank from uh, uh, from uh, bank from PHB bank, yes. bank at um, one hundred and fifty six b uh, is it billion or million? The naira is so what is that you don't even know the difference. Okay. The, as in oh, and that we will arrest him as soon as he comes. They should arrest him, oh please, Biko. And then look at the whole unorganized thing. Mm. Remember that when Onogen was being confirmed, Osibajo said the reason Osibajo said, and it was to cover Buhari at the time. Mm. Yeah, the reason Osibajo said that it took so long to confirm him was that they were going through the books, through his uh, records and everything, and they found no fault with him. Then suddenly, with elections looming, suddenly some nebulous group led by Buhari's publicity secretary from the CPC, they suddenly tells us that we have found him, we have found this, this, this. I mean, all of this, again, Obasanjo, being experienced in this kind of matters, yeah. knows when it is happening. All right. So it is not about Obasanjo now, but about our future. Mm. Nonsense is happening. Agreed. You made very, very valid points, speaking out all these instances. But is there a part of you that probably suspects that since Obasanjo has visibly thrown his weight behind Atiku and his campaign, uh, here's, could, my, could, here's my could view it be on him, Could it be him uh, flaming the embers of I mean, the opposition here's, here's and supporting their, their pressures? Here's my view on Obasanjo. More than anybody in his class of, uh, of 
ex-military, that's the class of 66 as we like to call them. Okay. He is one person who has an eye on the way history will judge him. Which is why, for example, the moment he left, he finished being head of state in 1979, the first thing he did was to sit down and write a book. Obasanjo is very conscious of the fact that he supported Buhari in 2015, mm. and Buhari has turned into a disaster. So what he's trying to do is to, is, is, to, is to distance himself so that history will say, okay, he put this on us, but he spoke up and when it's things record. went bad, and it's on record. Obasanjo has that eye. All right. Thank you very much, Shata. Let's move on very quickly to you today. Federal government to probe ASU expenditure defends all subsidy regime. And this is a statement that was made by, by the finance minister. She said, well, that uh, the, the ASU has been asking for uh, making several demands for monies to be released to them. And some of it, uh, were, they said it was supposed to be for infrastructural developments in their institutions, over 1.1 trillion naira. But she says she's holding the grounds that, you know, if ASU has to demand for more money, especially the 20 billion that was set up in this vote last year, we should defend the use of the previous funds released. Yeah, which only makes sense. Um, a, a lot was in this story. I, mean, it, I, I read the story and I'm like, I must have read the story before. <laughs> because it, the premise is the same. It's like deja Arguments all over again. Mm. And that's why our education system, our university, especially our commerce and our, our in limbo, because we, we, we we're sort of stuck in this groundhog day thing where we're repeating the same things. Mm. Um, if you if you look at any association um, within the country, absolutely any, you will find uh, cause for concern. There will be the corruption. Um, part of the reason I argue that you know people organize themselves into associations in this country anyway is for personal gain, and ASU is no different. So clearly, if you look at it, the probe as um, closely, they will find the leadership wanting. It's clear, considering the sums that have um, already been poured um, into the system. However, that does not negate the need and the fact that um, the universities need funding, that the government and the ministry has been, has, 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 has possibly have, have not done their job quite simply. The system needs massive, um, massive investment. The system needs massive investment, and it hasn't got since over the years. Um, now the, the federal government has, this is a tax they use sometimes, and which is going on the and say, okay, the one that will give you explain how you spent it. Yes. So, bottom line, that's, that's what this is. How have you spent what you've asked? How, how have you spent what we've given you? Um, the, um, the association is countering, telling them that, look, huge investments to require. There's a backlog on, on, on our wages. Uh, you haven't paid. There is, um, we've, we've also made cases. So, it's not like they're, they're not just asking for their own back uh, wages. They're saying, look, their investments required. You need to fund um, specific, you need to create a scheme. Uh, that will guarantee funding of the investors. That hasn't happened. Mm. The ministry has this back saying that it's a technology fund. Also so the back and forth. The back and forth. Really, there's nothing new in here. It's, yeah. it's pretty much it's all the same thing. Yeah, but I think there's a key, there's a key point here. Mm. Just looking at the end of the story, which I, I think should fundamentally color how we look at it. Mm. I don't know of concurring me wrong when the anyone is involved there with law, but I don't know of any law that empowers the federal government to look into the finances of any association of any labor union mm -hmm. or any labor association that's fair enough i'm just you know I'm fair enough you know, you know right. there's points about that i don't think what there's one of the things that Toba sandra complained of his letter yeah fine you see it's a part of what we're saying here so overreach you can talk about overreach now i i would I, I, i'm want to believe that what they're asking for is not an assessment of the books of the association how do you spend your dues how do you do all of that but the money that we give you explain mm, accountability right, accounts for it thank you very much gentlemen uh, let's quickly move on to messages uh, before we go to the next story we have this one here from Dotsu who says oh uh, okay Chata is just giving a shout out for being a realist with statistics to back you up and then uh, thank you very much for calling this out uh, please put your names to your messages Ian says uh, Chata just nailed it I know why Shawari and others are struggling for presidency who says you must be president to make an impact? All of these guys could have found their way into the Senate or the House of Reps. They can still make impact from there. And in a process built with visibility and noise and fame, that's very key to winning the votes of the people for bigger positions. And then Waji says, um, Cheta will not, I repeat, will not kill me this morning. Uh, Henry O'Carroll from Ago says, only, sh uh, we're not talking about this uh, this morning. Femi says, uh, this is the reality for 2019. Chata speaking the truth. It might be different in 2023. But today, the election is a referendum on Buhari's performance, and we can realistically defeat him. Femi from VI, thank you very much. 
Okay, so real quick, let's move on to our next story. This one here comes to you, chemists. It's, it's from this day newspaper. It says, Presidential Panel Condemns Torture of Suspects. And uh, it's well, the panel is led by the Executive Secretary of National Human Rights. Uh, that's Tony Uchuku. And well, he expressed, he's expressed a couple of sentiments and thoughts about this. Please watch this. Yeah, the National Human Rights Commission. So essentially, the Presidential Panel, in the form of the Special Matter, which is what we remember the answers, campaigned that went down to the panel was uh, instituted to look into some of the concerns that were raised by people who essentially looked at their social media campaigns complaining about the perceived excesses of that police unit. So they had an, they had an on the spot visit um, to the South's main detention facility in the South Bay Metro on January 18th, which visited members of the panel encountered such things as detainees with scars and serious injuries, and those detainees made it abundantly clear to them that those were as a result of torture. So the panel has said that as part of its investigations, it summoned its deputy police officers, it's also summoned senior supervising police officers who are supervising these cases. Ojuku um, said that the unit, at least from the preliminary investigations, the unit um, encountered such things as the, that they queried such things as why SARS would be involved in you know, the cases of minor offenses, for example, in discriminatory arrest and detentions, and they also called out the building of the criminal justice system. I mean, when you look at it, what that campaign you know, sought to to actualize, mm -hmm. right? And it, it, this this looks like a step in the right direction. The only caveat for me would be we have a student development national campus in the history of this country. What is really going to come out of this? What are the reforms? The, the police came out um, with some preliminary guidelines on what they wanted to do with EPSAs going forward. They're talking about bigger cells? Yes. Or do we see that happening? Though? Yeah, that is it. Uh, the question of all of this is actually in the action and in the doing. So, um, good step in the right direction, but lots of things still, you know. Okay, to be in the balance. Yeah. Thank you very much for that one. Let's move on to our next story. This one here comes to you, uh, Chetza. It says, how Boko Haram attack uh, destroyed Nigerian community uh, ran. And this comes from the Freedom Times. So they're saying an estimated 76,000 uh, displaced persons camped in Rand face starvation uh, because agencies of the United Nations working on them, uh, working there have uh, halted operations due to the insecurity in that area. Well, I, I think what it, I once said on this show that, uh, that the moment the uh, foreign NGOs pull out of the, the, the Lake Charge region that our nakedness will be exposed for the whole world to see. The fact of the matter is that the Boko Haram fight is going very fast because there's no entire amount of sugar put in it. Um, in the Iran area, there were 76,000 refugees. Many of them are up in sticks because Boko Haram has been attacking Iran. Um, many of them are up in sticks and headed towards Midori. We have at least 50,000 who headed to, who headed to the Midori area from uh, uh, from uh, the Bama and the, from the Bama Mongolo axis. That massacre is practically a black hole. Um, last night, Uniyadi came under attack. Uniyadi is in Yube State. Okay. Also last night, the Meduguri Bama Road came under attack. That's in Borno State. There, remember that there are two act, uh, factions of Boko Haram who are basically working at cross purposes and together at the same time. And it was, again, the last time I was here, I explained how the military essentially aided them by putting a, a barracks in Mati and preventing them from destroying each other. It's going really bad. And I don't know, as in, at this point, I'm at a loss on what to do. Uh, what? So what can what can be done? Well, you're at a loss though. It, is, it says that some people in in that state are moving to neighboring countries like uh, Cameroon and other places. What can agencies around do to aid the military? The military doesn't want help. Any agency that tries to aid them, because the first step towards aiding the military is acknowledged fact. Mm -hmm. Any agency that tries to aid, the next thing will, will, they will be accused of working for Boko Haram. It has happened not once, not twice. All right. So come on. Thank you. We have quick messages here on Twitter. Adiolu Oyekon sent this one. It says the analysis here is laughable. Speaking to the education issue, said probe Asu. Asu has never taken a, a dime from the federal government. I thought that was obvious uh, to an average analyst. I uh, ask university administrators appointed by government itself for any missing fund. 
And uh, this one is from Jeffrey. Jeff, so Jeffrey says, Jetta, you're right 100% regarding the two candidates, others being placeholders. Why can't the other 90, 90 political parties from Alliance uh, form an alliance and let's have three formidable parties? Let's move on. Okay, so this one here from the punching strip, it says, Fashola announces approval of 108 uh, meter providers. And uh, what they're saying that the licenses have been given out to sort out what the arbitrary billing problems in general. So this next story comes to you, Tunde. What are your thoughts about this? Okay, so um, it's hard to tell whether Fashola's intent or purpose is to really speak about the um, power sector and the industry or election. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, if you look at what he's saying, um, and, and he gives his talk at his, in his, at his word clearly, obviously, and it's not even clear, it's not even in the, in the story, that it's um, at an event to, you know, uh, talk about, um, you know, it's a neighborhood co um, consultation or campaign for the election of the president. So obviously you would expect that in such a forum that the brightest possible picture or image is painted, which is why perhaps you would um, want to skim over some of the half things. Um, that have been highlighted, uh, one of which is to say that um, we have improved power supply in this um, in yeah, 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 the bit in mm. quite, quite short. Mm. Maybe, maybe it was written okay. for you. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, and mm. then he goes on to say that uh, they're, they're creating um, 108 new um, meter providers or mm. you know, that the scheme has been approved mm. to create a business for meter suppliers. Let's hope it doesn't create a hoarding you know, market. A hoarding market. Um, for lack of a better word. And yeah, as I say generally, it says people elect us to do a decent job. Um, we've improved power. Um, How's your provided, power improved? So, so come on. Man. <laughs> um, I was waiting for that they've, point. They've improved, uh, that they've supplied um, power supply, solar power, sorry, so solar power to um, to foreign shops, one or two shops in a foreign, and on the back of that, the whole nation should be different. All right, Babatun Discord sent in this one on WhatsApp. Says, uh, "Good morning. I think most people will take this serious." Uh, talking about Basin Drive, his letter had started with an apology. He's accusing Buhari of behaving like a bachelor when he clearly did more evil than Buhari. PNB did not remove the governor. They didn't try to run for a third term. They did not mask a whole village. I think we can all agree OBJ was worse than PNB. He's staring at defeat for his anointed candidate and crying for help. We have this one in from um, oh, please add your name Baker. Top Baker from Obudu says. I do not agree with Cheta. We will get more votes for the other parties this time around. He said other parties will not get up to 1 million votes combined, but I believe they will get at least 10 million votes. You don't need to 500,000. We need to go to the next story, please. Next story, real quick. This one here says, uh, from Daily Times, courts, victims creating difficulties in punishing rapists. And uh, you know what? Let's just dive into it. Chemists, what are your thoughts about this? Uh, there, are some, there are some really interesting observations here. So the Daily Times spoke to a couple of legal practitioners and they said this is some of the challenges that um, we, we are facing in, in dealing with what many, many perceive the other rising incidences of rape, if, if, if certainly not in the practice, but in the reporting. So these are a couple of concerns. The kind of environment we're in, you know, encourages the victims to actually stay silent and hear the emotional trauma and not report it, you know, considering the fact that the other option is stigmatization in those situations where even family members in the bid to or, you know, in air quotes, protect the family name, um, decide not to prosecute the matter. This is a situation that I personally, once upon a time, at the Defense Council encountered. So it's something that I do know for a fact happens. The judicial process also does not necessarily help matters in that, you know, some court judges insist on things like medical tests and other evidences. Well, what and can be done to, you know, rectify the process? The, the thing is this, fundam fundamentally, when you're dealing with relationships that are of in that are of a relatively private nature, it really is hearsay, but there are also power, power dynamics at play. So the court needs to, I think, step back to the times. I think we need to have a situation where more practitioners in the criminal justice system actually sit down with people who actually help and aid with victims so that they can actually understand, you know, from, go about. Yeah, from the potential victim's perspective, you know, some of the concerns they might have. And I think we should relax some of the more stricter judicial and legal requirements around proof, uh, proof, uh, proof and evidence and hearsay and you know, oral and documentary evidence. I think those are some of the ways we can go. And obviously, fast track cases. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for that one. Yeah. Thank you, Ikemis. It's a quick start, a quick messages here on WhatsApp. Ben Yakumu said, Fashola was politicking with his talk on the for, at the forum. And then uh, Taj sent in another one, said, truth is, 
power has significantly significantly improved at my end in Lagos. What end, please let us know. Uh, Richard from Ijago says the prepaid meters is a luxury. We've been asking for it for two years now. No show. Kudu says, uh, Chetha, please stop listening in the public. I equally watched the Kadaria Kader interview. When PNB was asked if he would accept the results of the election if he lost, uh, PNB simply said if he loses, that would not be the first time he would lose an election. But he went on to highlight the previous elections which he lost and the legal steps he took to challenge the results of those elections when he was sure the outcome outcomes were far from fair. Please go watch the interview again. Uh, stop just nothing. Thank you very much. I think we've taken the meat of your story of your message here. Henry O'Caro from Agos says, I totally support Atiku for leaving the debate with the absence of Buhari. He would have come under the gun, if, yeah, which may hurt his campaign if he went ahead to do that. And we'll have another message here. Please add your names to your messages so we can read them. Uh, final message here from me. Uh, it says, Val is forming devil's advocate. So you think those three candidates can move anyway in coming elections? I'd have to go with Chetha and Atiku's absence and his opinion on that. It has its positives and negatives, but why is the number one man not there? How come most Nigerians do not know about the Nigerian candidates uh, that were strangely put before the main debates we all knew about? That was the pointer that he was never going to attend. Unfortunately, we can't exhaust all the messages, but we encourage you to tune in at 9 o'clock for Lagos Talks 91, where we treat one of these major issues or have a fantastic interview with one of the leading candidates for the senatorial elections, Lagos. Join us in 14 minutes, where we'll switch lanes to talk sports inside of the locker room, but special thanks to our analysts for coming in this morning. Chetawan is a very interesting, very uh, entertaining. You didn't give me a right of reply. Yeah. At Chickstar on socials, at Tundio Kufi is at Big Hoops on all socials, and as well, the chemist at FM, thank you very much. You can find him up on Twitter as George Ike. Lagos, we talk sports in the locker room next.